Welcome to this segment of Because You Asked. I'm Barry Nussbaum. You may not know the name Ahmed Dakamsa, but you should, as he is the infamous Jordanian mass murderer. With his release a few days ago from Jordanian prison, he's been all over the world press. You wanted to know who is Ahmed Dakamsa and why is he important? First, the background. In March 1997, Dakamsa opened fire with an automatic weapon at Israeli schoolgirls on a trip to the Jordanian-Israeli border at a very special crossing called the Island of Peace. He killed seven schoolgirls, wounding seven others and a teacher. A Jordanian military court later deemed Dr. Amsa mentally unstable and sentenced him to life in prison rather than imposing the death penalty. Jordan's then ruler, King Hussein, condemned the attack and later traveled to Israel to offer his condolences to the families of the murdered schoolgirls. The capital Amman also paid compensation in March 1997, a few days after the attack. King Hussein personally apologized for this incident, traveling into Israel and visiting the families grieving in their homes. He arrived during the traditional Jewish mourning ceremony known as Shiva, and during his visit, the broadcast was sent live throughout Israel of his conversations with the families. Now, during that visit, in which King Hussein stood alongside Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, he offered an apology on behalf of the Kingdom of Jordan, telling the parents, quote, Your daughter is like my daughter. Your loss is my loss. We are all members of one family. The shooting is a crime that is a shame for all of us. I feel as though I have lost a child of my own. If there's any purpose in life, it will be to make sure that all the children no longer suffer the way our generation did." Unquote. Afterwards, King Hussein also visited the wounded schoolgirls in the hospital, and the financial compensation was paid to the families affected by the attack. King Hussein's sincere act was an unusual gesture in the history of the Israeli-Arab conflict, which deeply moved the mourning Israeli public, and it helped improve relations between the two countries after the attack. It was a very touching gesture of conciliation from the late ruler, and one that was widely praised. In Jordan, life terms in prison are open-ended, meaning after 20 years, a court can decide to keep or release any prisoner after a 20-year minimum sentence. Early on Sunday morning, Dak Amsa was released from the Bab al Hawa prison in Erbid, 60 miles north of the capital of Amman, after serving the minimum sentence of 20 years. Dak Amsa was driven home in a convoy of dozens of celebratory honking cars whose drivers were making noise and waving their arms, laughing and smiling. A video showed on social media that day on Sunday, he was shown receiving well-wishers in his clan's meeting hall in the village of Abdir. All were very happy. The Jordanian security forces set up checkpoints along the access road to the village, preventing even more journalists from entering with cameras. In comments that were broadcast on Al Jazeera satellite TV, Dakamsa was unrepentant. He said that those who criticized him for killing young girls were, quote, hired pens and admonished them to fear God, unquote. Standing in the street, dressed in a suit and tie, he said, quote, Palestine needs every single Arab and Muslim. And then, asked by the Al Jazeera reporter about a purported Israeli plot to have him killed, Dak Absa said, quote, Israelis are human garbage that other people got rid of by dumping them in Palestine, the most sacred place after Mecca. This garbage should be burned or buried. This will happen if not in our generation, then in other generations." Unquote. 
In another videotape statement posted online, Dakamsa urged Jordanians not to believe what he called the life of the lie of normalization with Israel and the idea of its two-state solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. He said there would only be one state of Palestine which would replace Israel. Karen Mizrahi, one of the girls Dakamsa shot and wounded in the attack, said his release from prison is a very difficult day for her. She told Israeli TV how he shot her four times from very close range while she was trying to escape the carnage. Her twin sister was also shot and wounded in the attack. She said, I saw the look of murder in his eyes and that his release had brought back memories flooding back to her. It feels like being wounded again. The Israeli government had no comment on the release. Israel and Jordan cooperate closely on security matters, including in the battle against Islamic extremism. Even if their 1994 peace treaty remains widely unpopular, especially in Jordan, where many residents have Palestinian roots. For me, watching the response within Jordan to the release of Dak Amsa, it's obvious that when a mass murderer is celebrated, and the murderer is congratulated on television with thronging crowds that the peace between Jordan and Israel is truly on shaky ground. The current King Hussein, who is the son of the late King who traveled into Israel to share the family's grief, rules with a shaky future. If he cannot control the murderous hate of his own subjects, the peace between Israel and Jordan may not last long. Sad, but true. Thanks, viewers, for this great question. Please keep your questions coming to American Truth Project and our social media on Facebook or Twitter. If we select your question, you get a special gift. We're here to answer your urgent questions because you asked. I'm Barry Newsbaum.